Hey everybody, my name is Patrick and I help regular creators like you and me succeed on YouTube. And today I have, I have way too many microphones. I think I have a problem. Welcome to the ultimate microphone shootout where I'm gonna go through each one of these microphones and tell you why they may or may not work for you. Now, some of these microphones are attached to me and they're recording right to themselves, which is a really cool feature. Some of these microphones are plugged directly into my M1 MacBook Pro and recording using different apps there. Some of these microphones are plugged into this Zoom uh, LiveTrack L8 console and recording there. So I've got a bunch of different record sources. Actually, one of the microphones is also plugged right into my camera. But let me kind of just go through these microphones, tell you why you may or may not love them, and let you be the judge of which mic or which mics are right for you. If I switch the audio between these different microphones, you'll always see somewhere in this frame a, a label telling you which microphone I'm using and everything, even though I'm not sponsored, everything is going to be, be linked down below uh, in this description. So click away, have fun, let's get into it. Let me start by this small microphone here. This is the Rode. NT-USB Mini. Now, this microphone is wonderful because it is so simple and so cost effective. It is a USB-C microphone that plugs right into your computer. Uh, it can also plug into uh, other devices that have USB-C capability like uh, an iPad or an iPhone. It has on the back of it uh, a headphone jack so that you can monitor your audio. And this is a microphone that is always in my backpack. It packs up really, really easily. I can just take this magnetic base off of it and pack it away in my bag. I can also uh, pull out the rubber attachment that allows it to connect to this base here to then screw it onto uh, any of these mic stands that you see here. And this microphone also sounds great. So if you are recording an interview, if you're doing voiceovers, uh, if you're live streaming or uh, in a Zoom meeting or, or something like that, the Rode NT-USB Mini is absolutely great. I don't use it a ton because I have some other microphones that I carry with me that are a little bit more uh, feature rich, let's say, but this is a backup that I carry around all the time. It's only 99 bucks and it's uh, super small, super portable. And if you're looking for a quick go-to microphone that will fit in almost any bag or even in your pocket, uh, I would go with the Rode NT-USB Mini. Let's let's talk about another Rode microphone here. I'm going to move the NT, actually I'll just keep the NT-USB Mini right there. This is the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now, this is a very feature rich microphone. Number one, it has an eight inch plug right on the side of it that will plug directly into uh, your camera or your audio console, plug into almost anything to begin recording audio. There's no batteries required. Uh, there's no uh, power supply that's needed. This is a, a microphone that is almost always on top of my camera, except for today. Great little shotgun microphone that's going to capture audio, great. And as you can see, I have it on this articulating arm here. So I keep one of these articulating arms and this microphone, the Rode uh, Video Mic Go To in my Peter McKinnon 35, mil, 35 liter. Milliliter? No, liter. My Peter McKinnon backpack uh, all the time. Uh, it's great uh, for when I am shooting a live stream or recording some uh, voiceover work and I want a really rich sounding microphone. I just plug this into my computer via USB and it sounds uh, amazing. Now, this is also um, a $99 microphone. So the price point is still uh, great. And that USB-C capability along with the eighth inch plug makes it a way more more versatile mic than the Rode NT-USB Mini, but you may not need that. You may not need the versatility. So all you need is a great uh, tabletop microphone or a microphone that can connect to uh, an, uh, an arm like this. Um, Rode NT-USB Mini may be what you want to go with, but if you want versatility, something that's going to mount to your camera, something that's going to be actually a little bit lighter and uh, depending on what kind of a case you're using, a little bit more portable, I'd go with the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Now, before we move on to some more of these uh, content creator type microphones, uh, let's talk about a classic standard. Now, this is the 
Shure SM58. But as you can see from this blue ring around the microphone, it's the uh, Beta 58, which is a little bit different than your standard Shure SM58. Now, this is a microphone that you're going to see vocalists in bands uh, use all the time. It's a super rich dynamic microphone. It's going to give you a boomy vocal. And to be honest, uh, if, if you go and watch your favorite podcaster right now on YouTube or listen to them, you're going to see them use a microphone that looks more like this called the Shure SM7B. It's an industry standard podcasting content creation microphone. But I'm going to be honest with you. Many people will disagree with me. I don't hear much of a difference between this uh, SM58 and a Shure SM7B. Now, the Shure SM7B has that podcast look. It has that tabletop look that a lot of content creators want to go for. But I think that the Shure SM58 or the SM Beta 58 sounds just as good. And it comes in at a fraction of the price. A Shure SM58 is about 99 bucks, but you can find plenty of them used for around 40 or 50 bucks. And these are built like tanks. They may look like they've been run over by a car, but they're still going to work. Trust me. So this is a standard that you can go out and buy right now and use this mic with your band, use this mic for your podcast, use this mic to record record voiceovers. There's a reason why all these companies are making these new fancy microphones that have all these features, but the SM58 or the Beta 58 from Shure has always just stuck around. Speaking of companies kind of reinventing things and creating new microphones that are really feature rich, let's talk about the microphones that are attached to me. Right now I'm using a system from DJI. Now you may have heard of DJI before. They make a lot of great industry standard drones, both for the amateur uh, who wants to just fly around a drone, have fun, film some things on vacation, up to professional uh, drone users. But they've now gotten into the audio realm with the DJI. Mic. Now, the DJI mic looked at the Rode Wireless Go and the Rode Wireless Go 2 and said, hold my beer. And they've created this lav microphone system that is, it was almost an immediate purchase for me once I saw this thing featured. Now, it's not cheap. This system is a little over $300, but if you are a content creator looking to up your audio game, I would say go ahead and look, instead of buying one of these microphones that does require a little bit of uh, setup, does require it to be kind of, you know, visible and in your face, uh, look at the DJI mic because it is a super small system with great uh, big sound. Let me tell you how it, it works. First of all, the DJI mic comes in this uh, case. It has a USB-C port on the back because this case charges what's on the inside, which is where you will find two transmitters, which are not in their location because they're both on me right now, and a receiver. Let's talk about these transmitters first. First of all, these transmitters are a microphone themselves. I can simply hold this and go back and forth with someone I'm interviewing, or I can strap it, magnetize it, clip it, whatever you want to do, uh, to me, and it's recording my voice. It is a microphone itself. But on this microphone, you'll also notice that it has an input where you can plug in uh, an additional microphone. So this works a couple of different ways. If I was using the Rode Video Mic Go 2 here, but my camera was all the way across the room here, I could take this little um, uh, tr a transmitter and I could connect my Rode Video mic go to to the transmitter and it would send signal to uh, this receiver which is across the room plugged into an audio console plugged into uh, my camera plugged into well almost anything. So it's a great little wireless system when you're trying to connect a mic somewhere else. Uh, you can also plug a lav, like I have here, a lavalier mic into one of these DJI mics and simply strap them to your body. Now, not only do they send signal to this receiver, which can be plugged into almost anything, but they are also recording to themselves. So if you have these DJI mics sending signal to this DJI mic receiver, over across the room, which is plugged into a camera and it's recording your audio. These DJI mics are also recording audio to themselves. Maybe that's your main primary source of audio or you're using that as a backup in case something fails. This is a wonderful system. And one thing I love, one little feature that's great is if you 
press the button to start recording, you'll you'll feel the mic vibrate. But if you press it again, it vibrates twice, lets you know I'm not recording. And as you can see, it's kind of got some lights telling me it's recording. You can also turn those off. Um, you can also hide this mic away. If I decided to take this mic and set it over here, it would still record uh, great audio. And it comes in this great little case uh, with a, a couple of adapters for both uh, lightning to an iPhone or USB-C to your iPad or uh, another device that uses USB-C to record. Like your computer. So I could from this microphone, take this USB-C uh, connection here, plug it, uh, connect it to the DJI mic receiver. I could plug that receiver into my computer and use this mic for, let's say, a, a live stream over Zoom or, or whatever you're using. So really, really versatile system. Maybe you don't need all of those features, but one of the reasons why I um, suggest that content creators check out the DJI mic, because you can grow with the system or the system can grow with you. Meaning if you start doing more live streams, start doing more interviews, you have the gear available to you to, uh, to do those types of things. Um, in one tiny package. This is always in my backpack. It's always with me and I'm using it now. I, I love this mic. It's so great. Okay, so we've talked about Rode, we've talked about Shure, we've talked about DJI. Let's talk about Samson for a minute. Now, these are a couple of mics I have completely uh, fallen in love with. What I have here is the Samson Q2U. And over here, I have the Samson Q9U, which is the big brother to uh, the Samson Q2U. Now, both of these microphones have some similarities, but they are also set apart in a couple of different ways. Uh, number one, both of them have either XLR uh, capability or connection, which means I can plug them into any regular old audio uh, console. They also both have USB-C connection, much like the Rode NT-USB Mini. I can take these mics, I can plug them directly into my computer and using GarageBand, using Logic, using um, Ableton, using uh, even QuickTime, I can just start recording audio for my podcast or for my interview. These are great for voiceover work, and they're also great to sing some vocals into if you're doing uh, uh, live music or more uh, studio uh, work. Um, I always have this Samson Q2U along with the Rode NT USB Mini and along with the DJI mic. I'm a little bit mic obsessed. I always have this in my backpack in case I want to record something quickly. This is always on my desk, the Samson Q9U. Um, and I, I love using this for podcasts because it has that big podcast mic look. It also has some settings um, on the back of the mic for EQ and things like that. The Samson Q2U has a simple off switch if I want to mute the mic. The Samson Q9U has a mute switch that I can press. Oh, which I accidentally pressed. The Samson Q9U also has a mute button that I can press. Be careful with it though, because I just pressed it for hopefully not too long. Now the Samson Q2U comes with this stand. It doesn't come with this little pop filter or anything. It comes with this stand. It comes with this mic clip. It comes with an XLR cable. It comes with a USB cable. Everything you need for about 60 or 70 bucks. What a package. It's amazing. The Samson Q9U doesn't come with an XLR, uh, but it comes with a, a, a stand, uh, more of an attachment to attach to any stand. And it comes with all the USB cables uh, that you need. So this comes with everything you need to get started. You can get started with this microphone, but you're probably gonna have to buy a mic stand of some kind, unless you actually wanna hold it while you're recording. I'd, I'd really, really suggest getting a stand. I love the way both of these microphones sound, um, and I'm not getting rid of either one. I actually bought the Big Sibling Q9U after I'd already purchased the Q2U, but I love them both. I use them for different reasons, and if you're looking to start recording right away your podcast, go for the Q2U. It comes with everything you need that day. You can start recording, but the Samson Q9U is a little bit more feature-rich in the way it looks, the way it sounds, and some of those settings on the back. But remember, those settings can also be made on the Samson Q2U using uh, a console like I have here or a digital audio workstation, a DAW in your computer. I think for our scenario today, um, you just kind of have to pick which one you like, which one sounds best. And if you're kind of struggling to decide between the two, well, buy them both on Amazon and return one if needed or both if you don't like them. So Samson is coming out with some really great products and, and I actually 
purchased both of them and love them. So no complaints here. Let's change gears for a second and, and talk about a microphone that you can't even see right now because it's plugged into my camera. A lot of time for me, function wins over form. Or is it form over function? I don't remember. I like this microphone. It's made by Sarmonic. It's super tiny and using an eighth inch plug, it plugs into whatever gear you're using. And one of the reasons I really like it at, on my camera is to be honest, the Rode Video Mic Go 2 sounds better, but this microphone cannot stay on my camera and, and then fit into my backpack. The Sarmonic can. So ease of use, being able just to pull out my camera, press record and have better audio than the onboard mic for the Sony ZV-E10 is really important to me. So I still keep this around. And if I was asked, hey, I need you to come and shoot something at 5 p.m. today, I would take the time to pick the right mic for me, attach it to my camera using the DJI mic system or, or something else and, and, and shoot a great video. But when I wanna pull something out really quickly and, and vlog or um, uh, shoot a quick interview, the Sarmonic is always plugged into my Sony ZV-E10 for now because it's just so compact and sounds better than the onboard mics. And one other feature I really like about it is the fact that since it is a movable uh, cam, uh, and one other thing that I really like about it is since it is a movable mic that plugs right into the side of my Sony ZV-E10, if I am filming someone and I want to talk to the person I am filming, I can flip the mic around to me talk and it records directional towards my uh, my voice and then when they respond turn the mic back to them it's a great little microphone it's super cheap and i've used it on a gopro i've used it on my sony zv e10 and i really like it Finally, we come to um, the boss, in my opinion. This is the microphone I have used to record almost all of my podcasts. And anytime I film at this desk, uh, I will be using one of these microphones, but always have this mic here as my main source of audio. Every time I think I'm gonna use another mic, and, and I have this recording as a backup, it becomes my main source. So let's actually take a look at the Sennheiser M... Sennheiser MKH416P48. Link in the description because nobody is going to remember that product name. The Sennheiser MKH... The Sennheiser MKH P. The Sennheiser MKH 416P48. Now, this microphone was a gift, and I'm really glad it was because this mic costs a little over a thousand bucks. It is not cheap, but you can hear, in my opinion, the quality of audio that this microphone captures. It's a shotgun mic, and I'm using this same articulating arm that I'm using for my Rode Video Mic Go 2 attached to my desk to uh, record. This mic, <laughs> you can see it right here. Having these articulating arms, uh, you know, I obviously I have a couple of them here. I carry one in my backpack all the time. These are lifesavers for all sorts of things. I know this is a microphone video, but these little arms, I can attach cameras to them. I can have an overhead shot. I can have uh, just a secondary shot off to the side. They work great. But this Sennheiser microphone it has become a staple in my workflow because of just how amazing it sounds. And you can truly tell the difference between a microphone that's a hundred bucks or, you know, has great portability, but not as good sound as something like this. You truly get what you pay for. But I understand that so many of us can't afford a microphone like this. That's why I said, you know, this guy was a gift. I'm so glad it was because I wouldn't go out and buy one because so many of these microphones are close enough to this type of quality that I don't think many viewers are going to notice many times which mic you're using until you start recording right uh, from your MacBook Pro using your AirPods or something like that. That's when people go, 
wow, this audio is bad. And as you can see, the prices of these microphones are not bad. And you can really quickly, for just a little bit of cost, upgrade your audio using one of these microphones. I've done the work for you. One of these is definitely going to work. Uh, so quick, quick, quick review. Uh, Sennheiser NKH 416P48, about a thousand bucks. I can't believe I remembered that product name. I'm shocked and flummoxed. Uh, we have the Sarmonic microphone, which is on my Sony ZV-E10 right now, about 60, 70 bucks, if I remember correctly. I bought that a long time ago. We have the two Samson siblings here. We have the Samson Q2U at about 60 or 70 bucks. We have the Samson Q9U at about a hundred bucks. A little over a hundred bucks? I don't quite remember. Of course, we have the DJI mic system, which as you can tell, I am in love with and use all the time. And I'm also using along with the DJI mic system, the LAV plugged into one of my transmitters here is the Rode LAV, which is about a uh, hundred bucks uh, as well. I have the Shure SM58. Now the SM58, you can find one of those 30 or 40 bucks used online. They're built like a tank. They're going to work fine. But this is the Beta 58, which is a little bit more expensive uh, than that. I also have the Rode NT-USB Mini pretty simple microphone, USB right into your computer or any other device, and you are recording. Then I have the Rode Video Mic Go To. 100 bucks, super versatile mic, uses an eighth inch plug to plug into any audio source, or you can plug it in via USB. This is a huge spectrum of microphones that if you're looking to create content, one of these will work for you. All the links can be found down in the description. And let me know in the comments, which one do you like better? And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe. And if audio, if audio is your thing and you wanna dive a little bit deeper into one of these microphones, I mean, you should, should probably check out this video.